Maayong Adlaw! Good day my friends! Alden here and welcome back to a new video on the channel. Today we are in Ormoc City dubbed as the city of beautiful people. Sana all mga gwapak magaganda! <laughs> but today though I'm gonna show you some of the beautiful places to see here in the city. If you're new to the channel, subscribe now para hindi mo mamimiss ang susunod pa nating mga gala. Ready ka na? Let's go! Welcome to Ormoc City, the center of commerce in Northwest Leyte and a major port city in the region. The city has over 230,000 residents making it the second most populated city in the region, next to the capital, Tacloban. But in terms of land area, this is the biggest city in Leyte. The city's name is derived from Ogmok, an archaic Visayan term for lowland or depressed plain. One great way to start your tour here in Ormoc City is mag explore dito sa kanilang Baywalk area. The plaza faces the historic Ormoc Bay, a site of the battle between Imperial Japan and the United States during the Second World War. Ormoc Plaza is where the locals enjoy a leisurely stroll. It hosted major social and cultural events in the city. What I love about our Mok City's plaza is its well-maintained pathways and picnic areas. It's dotted with old trees that are probably decades old. And speaking of old, you can also find here the Puente de la Reina. This cobblestone bridge is considered as the oldest bridge and last remaining existing Spanish structure in the city. It's translated as Bridge of the Queen. I read an article that this bridge served as a docking area for boats of Chinese and Indonesians who frequented the island to sell their products. But the surrounding area was probably reclaimed many years ago but it's still walking distance from the sea. Just beside the bridge is the Ormoc City Museum. This was the old city hall that was built in 1947, but now converted into their People's Museum. Richard Gomez, the city's former mayor, who is now a representative for latest 4th District, spearheaded this project and tourists can view art pieces created by local and national artists. World War II images and artifacts are also on display in the museum. Right across the museum is the St. Peter and Paul Church. The parish was established way back in 1630 by the Jesuits. The church building used to be a massive Baroque structure made of stone blocks. But in November of 1944, the Americans rained bombs on the city, hitting the church and surrounding structures, apparently mistaking it for the Japanese hospital. What remained of the beautiful stone church was the front where the altar was located. At the moment, a major restoration is underway in the church. They are slowly restoring the dome with religious paintings in the ceilings. I am personally excited to see the completion of this restoration and will definitely be back once it's completed. The parish celebrates its feast day with a joyous fiesta every June 29, with the Pinya Festival as the highlight. Pinya, or pineapple, is the pride 
and somehow the icon of Ormok City. The pineapple of Ormok City, especially their queen pineapple variety, is dubbed as the sweetest pineapple ever. For the best Pinia experience, you can check out Sal's Pineapple Plantation. In this plantation alone, over 2,000 pineapples are harvested each day. The 210 hectare plantation in Barangay Hibunabon grows pineapples exclusively. You can take in the view of hectares upon hectares of pineapples while eating slices of the freshly harvested fruit from the plantation. You can take Instagram-worthy photos while you explore the area with your family and friends. You can even interact with the neighborhood farmers to find out more about their trade and daily activities on the farm. If it's your first time in Ormok, I highly recommend you visit Sabine Resort Hotel. This charming rustic hotel is a famous wedding destination in the region. You'll notice the resort's beautiful lobby with exposed wood beams. Step outside and a huge swimming pool awaits. There's even an area for kids. Sabine is an institution in Ermok and it's gonna remain on top of the best hotels in the region in the many years to come. Alright guys, we're here in Barangay, Cabintan. Uh, from the city proper is about um, a 25 minute drive. Uh, no, 25 kilometers and it's about a 30 to 35 minute drive. Nandito tayo ngayon sa kanilang tourism information center sa Barangay, Cabintan because we need to register. So yung tour package namin is 990 pesos for the four of us, uh, included na yung tour guide. And aside from the tour package, which is 990 pesos, we will be paying a separate entrance fee, and that's 50 pesos each. All right, we are here in the starting point sa trail natin to Sulfatara and Mount Mangilatong. Mangilatong. And at the same time, Mangilatong. Malingatong. Malingatong pala. Sleepy volcano. Crater Michelle, Crater, uh, Crater Lake Michelle. So, dormant volcano dormant na siya. Volcano. What's the name sa volcano? Jenny. Mount Jenny. Okay, maniwala dyan. As you can see on the sign, no guide, no trekking. Kasi, dahil mal malaki yung area, you need a tour guide. Or, you will get lost. <laughs> but so far, maganda yung trail dito. Lots of lush greenery around you and the best part hindi mainit dito the temperature is generally cool kasi we are in the highlands dito tong ferno murasag king pako <laughs> so we have here a pitcher plant carnivorous di siya ang pitcher plant mag secret na siya smell nga matrap ang insects na isod niya mag sod sa insects matrap ga ang acid sa iyang kanin water sa sod acid na siya sa insects and it's illegal to bring it at home. We're almost there. So it's about a 30 minute hike because there are a few rest stops. Kami. There's a sign Sulfatara Barangay Kabintan. It's 1,000 1, meters above sea level. So this is the final hike. It's a little Finally! We're here. We're here. We're here. Nice! As you can see behind me, uh, the rocks are uh, so This is a dormant volcano and you can really smell 
the sulfur. Let's check out this area. Pindo dito. Pero sobrang taas. <laughs> Nakakalula. Ganda. Nagkalisod. <laughs> <laughs> After Sulfatara, we went on another 45 minute hike to the view deck of Mount Malingatong. And I can't help but notice the beautiful, lush, tropical vegetation around us. Uh, 50 minutes. Last answer, let's Tell me. Last one to me. Pro tip, kung saka mabuki, dili mo guhahit. Ayok siyang duga si Alden. After uh, about an hour hike, we are finally here in the summit of Mount Balingatong. This is approximately 1,103 meters above sea level. And from here, you can see the summit. Summit or summit, right? The summit of Alto Peak or Mount Aminduen. That's the highest peak in Region 8. You heard that? The rooftop of Eastern Visayas. And below us, may ano dito? Sulfur. Sulfur vents. And we have a 360 degree view of the mountain ranges. And here's a wild berry. <laughs> All right, and we're back to main trail. And <laughs> <laughs> si Sir Pat kay ko siya, professional mountaineer. Well, for most people, naman, like uh, people like me, na hindi umakit sa mundok, it's really doable for most people, di ba? Sir Lito, yes, chill ako siya. <laughs> In a scale of one to ten, what's the difficulty level? Five. We're gonna go to a place, it's called Heaven's Peak, and the place is literally surrounded with flowers. And we're back. Maglalunch kami sa Heaven's Peak. It's lunchtime, we are now at Heaven's Peak here in Barangay Kabintan. Natay Bilao, this is, this set is good for 1,500 pesos for four persons. Natay tuna, sana siya? Chicken, grilled squid. Um, butter, garlic shrimp. butter garlic shrimps, radish, radish salad, kinilo na radish. Let's eat. All right, after lunch, ikot ikot tayo sa kanilang garden. This is Harden ni Mama Luz. Um, Heaven's Peak is still situated in Barangay Kabintan. Kita dito. I am literally surrounded by. Beautiful flowers in different species and colors. Take a look. I'm not sure kung anong pangalan nito. Um, let's find a flower that we can recognize. I think that's sunflower. <laughs> Bagay ba? In it. There's a pine tree over here. Ganda ng pine tree talaga. And. This is Saint Francis of Assisi, the patron saint of ecology. Very appropriate na nandito siya. There's a lot of varieties sa mga flowering plants dito. Uh, there's an entrance fee of 50 pesos per head. And the good thing is, yung 50 pesos niyo, a percentage of it is donated to the City Dog Pound, which is the Ormox Stray Oasis. So you can help the stray dogs. And in this portion are beautiful hydrangeas in different colors. So Branganda. Over here is a beautiful tunnel. A tunnel of flowers and different foliage. Kugusto ka og aslom kana lang red. Pero ang iyahagit kana mo na na she ripe. Kliomis. So, natay mga trees din hi kung managgo na ni nai nara, kalinlain lang ni nai mga native nga trees nga kanang ganahan jud gay sa mga bird. Mga mga mo create og food nila. So, naa din hi 
hopefully malagko ni tanan sila. <laughs> there are different sections sa garden. Actually, the last time I was here, it was before pandemic pa. Probably mga 2019. Pero ngayon grabe, nakagulat. Ang dami yung nagbago dito. Para, para, para. The once barren mudflats along the coastal barangays of Naungan, San Juan, and Lao became a thriving mangrove forest through government initiatives. The newest addition to Ormoc City's must visits is the Ormoc Mangrove Eco Park. It's just around 20 minutes from downtown. This eco park, located in Barangay Naungan, allows you to commune in the diverse mangrove ecosystem. You can explore the area in their specially built boardwalk with a view of Ormoc Bay. It covers an area of around 25 hectares and is home to a variety of mangrove species. Mangroves are not just marine habitats, but this serves as a natural barrier from storm surges. It protects the coastline from the destructive forces of the sea. This is the mystic and serene Lake Danao. This is my favorite destination in Ormoc, and I believe this is the jewel of the city's natural attractions. This violin-shaped lake on the mountains of the city was previously named Lake Imelda, but was changed to Lake Danao Natural Park afterwards. It is covering an area of 148 hectares and is about 700 meters above sea level. According to experts, this lake is volcanic in origin, like the popular Taal Lake in Tagaytay City. At more or less 700 meters above sea level, Lake Danao lies on an altitude similar to Tagaytay, making the area cooler than the average temperature in the Philippines. What I love about Lake Danao is its mystic vibe. The calm surface of the lake, often disturbed only by the gentle ripples caused by the wind, serves as a mirror reflecting the surrounding landscape that invites contemplation. The lake is a great place for swimming, boating, or fishing. A houseboat can be rented at 500 pesos for a day and a rowing boat at 150 pesos per hour. You can also check the Lake Danao view deck and enjoy sightseeing the breathtaking view of the entire lake. Picnic tables and toilets are also available, making it an ideal place for camping, trekking, picnics, and retreats. Guys, thank you so much for joining me in our Ormoc tour. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. And see you again on our future trip. Cheers!